Hey everyone, it's Joe from Gatchery Tech, and today I'm gonna to talk about op amps and how it changes your sound. And in this particular case, I'm gonna talk about the V6 Vivid from Burson Audio. Now I've reviewed the Burson Audio Funk, I've reviewed the Burson Audio Supercharger, so I'm gonna do a very, very high level overview of those two products and how it affected my testing and, and um, experience using these op amps. But the primary focus of the video is specifically the V6 Vivid and how it stacks up to something like the included Texas Instruments op amp. Now when you look at this op amp compared to a little one like that, there is a massive difference in size. This thing is absolutely huge and it's robust. Um, I switch these a lot. Like uh, when I was doing my AB test, I tried to keep it simple for most of my critical listening and I stay with one headphone, my Helm Audio deck, naturally this amplifier. And when I was switching from the stock Texas Instruments op amp to the Vivid, the thing that stood out the most is these little pins that come out of this op amp are incredibly weak and soft. They are very flexible. They're not meant to be constantly swapped in and out. So you have to be super, super careful when removing those as I drop this op amp. So that's, that's funny. Um, but these pins are much more robust. They are extremely strong and it's not like I'm, you know, manhandling and, and jamming this thing in and risking damage to it. But with the intent of what you do with op amps to switch them out or roll them. Some people may switch it once and be done and happy. But one of the fun things about the funk is that you can roll op amps and swap them out to change the sonic signature um, and overall audio performance. So I'm going to talk about how that affected the sonic signature and what the pros and cons are, I guess, because I'm going to be completely honest with this review. Um, there's no bias here. Now, Burson Audio did send this to me for review, so huge thanks to them. Uh, without that, this wouldn't have been possible and I wouldn't have experienced this because there's some trippy stuff that happens when I switched with this. Um, so I do wanna show you some basic housekeeping things and how you install it. If you look on this side of the op amp, there's a little bit of a groove. Now that groove is basically showing you what side is what on the op amp. And if you look in this case on the Burson Audio Funk, where you would insert it, there's also a little bit of a, a groove or a cutout. So what I'm gonna do is just use that and put it on the same side. Make sure I line up all the pins before I put pressure on it. And then I'll push it down, make sure it's seated, and I'm good to go. Now the Burson Audio Funk has two op amps. So uh, when you buy these, this is selling for $145 US for the pair of the dual series, dual power. Basically, you have a positive and negative voltage. Uh, the singles are used for something like the Burst Audio Fun, or if you have a different op amp already that uh, indicates single. Um, on the Burst Audio site, they show you a couple charts and helping you understand which ones to switch to. But it's 85 for one of these or 145 for two, and they come with this little dip. Um, I'm never gonna say the word, I forgot. It's like a dip harness or plate. It's like a basically a little adapter piece to, to put it into that. So I switch this a lot. That was starting to not hold up as well, so I got to a point where I didn't want to keep switching it because I was nervous I would damage those. Um, and I stayed, so I tried several headphones. Once I got a feel for how it impacted the sound, then I stayed with one headphone, the LCDX 2021 edition, just straight up quarter inch right into the amp. And then I just went back and forth with the songs that I'm intimately familiar with, the stuff I always listen to when I do my amp reviews, headphone reviews, even gaming headsets. DAX, you name it. Um, the Vivid name is fairly accurate. It is a vivid sounding op amp, which sounds kind of lame or and basic to say, but the simple sense is this is basically giving your amplifier a shot of espresso because everything is kind of more eager in, in your face, but it's not grainy or too like sibilant. It's not like it's just boosting treble and everyone's voice is, you know, and it's hurting your ears. Um, what I did notice is on certain higher frequency percussion instruments, they seem to attack faster and louder than a traditional like Texas Instruments op amp or something that's a little bit slow and, and lazier sounding. Um, they were very forward with the Vivid. And in the most cases, like it really depends on what you're listening to, how your ears are, you know, what your preferences are and what headphones you're using, to be honest. Because if you have an overly forward headphone or a very, um, I guess, mid to treble uh, emphasized headphone, like the HD 560S, it's not overly bright, but to some people it can come across a little bit bright and grainy sounding. Um, it's a great headphone though. I'm not knocking the 560S. Awesome headphone. 
And on something like this, it wasn't, the 560S wasn't hiding anything this was doing, and this was certainly letting that 560S scream as loud as it wanted to. So, you know, when I listen to the song Identikit from Radiohead, there's a percussion that's just going on and on. And I don't know all the instrument names. I'm going to sound like a noob. But um, when I listen to those tracks, those pieces were just a little bit harder and louder sounding. And the rest of the song, I, I couldn't like crank it as loud as I, I can tolerate with other op amps simply because that part of that song, that, that information was more forward than I was used to. So it seemed to be a little bit louder. Um, but the detail retrieval and the soundstage impact that this had compared to this was insane. The most remarkable thing about reviewing these op amps is it helped me better understand the LCD X. I have a lot of different headphone amps, decks, you name it. I was just using the Helm Bolt. I've reviewed this in the past. This cheap little, I think it's under a hundred bucks. This DAC is awesome. Just straight up Y adapter to the back of this. What this did though, when the Vivids were on, it was almost like, you know, yes, this is only one driver on each side. These big planar magnetic drivers. Typically you hear music left or right, and then there's some blend between phasing, time delay, amplitude from left to right, and that's how you get your imaging. And this almost made it sound like I had more than one driver on each ear, better than other products have that I've reviewed. It kind of like starts to decouple um, every single instrument and note I was hearing to sound more three-dimensional. And I'm not just saying it in a sense that this is all great and this is a massive improvement. I think because of this eagerness and openness and extreme vividness, um, I lost a little bit of the intimacy in the center stage that I was used to on something a little bit duller uh, and flatter sounding. And I'm not just saying this Texas Instruments. When I look at other amps I reviewed, like the Topping Stack, which sounds a little bit more compressed and uh, more intimate sounding, this is kind of like stretching every single note. If, if all the music was on a rubber band and there's some connection point, it's basically pulling all the rubber bands just a little bit further. And in some cases, it was a little bit less coherent for me because it wasn't as intimate. But at the same time, I never heard music presented in that way. And it was a boatload of fun to listen to it. Um, this made a bigger change than switching amps in a lot of cases. Most people, you just buy an amp. You're basically choosing what kind of inputs and outputs you want. And you have a volume knob. A lot of good amps are going to perform very similar, very similar to each other. So having an op amp that gives you a great chassis to begin with like this, which has speaker outputs, so you can power speakers. You have a huge, powerful Class A amplifier for headphones. It drives the piss out of these. Even on low gain, I can barely go to half volume. It's just too loud. Um, but now you have a product that is making a mean of meaningful impact um, on your sound, just like the Supercharger did. And what's cool about this is they're not really selling products that snake oil. Whether you agree with the pricing or not is one thing. Everyone has their own choice on value. You know, this amplifier is $545. This power supply is $345. And the op amps are $145. So you're at over $1,000 for a seemingly simple aluminum chassis. But like I said, I haven't heard music presented this way. So there, there is a uniqueness to this package. Um, and I had a lot of fun with it. The I did notice that the noise floor was quieter on these, which, you know, I pause my music, mute the laptop. Crank it, a little bit of a hiss. Most amps are going to have something. I switched to the V6 Vivid. The hiss got quieter. I had a lower noise floor. And then in testing with music, that was apparent as well. Switch on the Burson Supercharger, and the noise is basically gone. It's dead. Um, it's a noticeable improvement. So you're really, the Supercharger to me, it's more noticeable on speakers than headphones at louder volumes, um, but on more dynamic songs. If you listen to classical music, the supercharger is like a no-brainer add-on to me. It really makes a massive difference on music that has very, very quiet notes and very loud notes where you need that dynamic range. Um, the Vivids were fun. I, I can see like if you're spending this much on an amplifier like this with the precipice of or the intent of switching op amps, the V6 Vivids make a ton of sense. Now, they also make the V6 Classics, which is a little bit more refined, uh, smoothed over presentation. Um, which may be better for some people. You know, if you have a, a warmer, intimate sounding headphone, the Vivids are gonna bring stuff out of that headphone that you've never heard before. It was pretty remarkable. If you have an overly forward or very bright analytical headphone, 
this may present too much. You know, at some times it could come across like there's just so much information hitting your ears, you may not turn it up as loud. And that's what something like the classic would make more sense because it's a little bit more refined, laid back sounding. So I'm not saying the V6 Vivids are for everybody, but I think it makes a, a pretty impressive and memorable experience on your sound. I wouldn't want to own the funk and not get the Vivids because after hearing what it did and how much this headphone can do, this is actually helping me with my LCDX review that's coming up later because I've never heard this headphone do this stuff. I didn't know it was capable of throwing music around as wide as it did. I've never heard it soundstage that way before. Um, so that was a lot of fun and I just absolutely had a blast messing with these things. I don't know if I can keep switching them back and forth to keep A-Bing them because those aren't holding up. I have to get like a handful of backups, but damn, the Vivid was a good time. So uh, I hope you found this review helpful. Again, I'm trying to keep it honest. This isn't gonna be for everyone, but it's certainly a, a, a good way of changing your sound. And it's not snake oil, uh, it actually worked. So that was the most impressive thing. Anyway, with that being said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something new today. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you online. Bye. Thank you.